So good morning and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, today I'm proud to introduce the members of Georgia's first legislative Asian American Pacific Islander Caucus. So at 11 members, not only is it the largest delegation of AAPI legislators Georgia's ever elected, our state now boasts one of the largest legislative AAPI caucuses in the nation. So our members include, and those of you who are here, just give a little wave when I say your name, Representative Charlize Bird, Representative Syra Draper, Representative Sue Hong, Senator Nabila Islam, Representative Marvin Lim, Representative Farooq Mughal, Representative Sam Park, Senator Sheikh Rahman, Representative Rua Roman, and Representative Long Tran. We're also proud to include in our ranks three emeritus members who are former Representative B.J. Pack, former Senator Zara Karinchak, and former Representative B. Wen. My name is Representative Michelle Au, and I'm proud uh, to have been elected the chairperson of this historic caucus. To my colleagues, thank you so much for your trust in me, and I will not let you down. Today, I'm going to be introducing the other members of our caucus leadership who will be discussing some of the legislative priorities that we have identified as a group at our first meeting. And to our friends in the media, I would encourage you to focus not just on the novelty of this assemblage, which I understand is worthy of notice, uh, but to focus on the communities that we represent and the work that we aim to do together as a group. Because the goals of forming a caucus is in fact not about the individuals, right? It's about the communities we serve and the issues we want to advance and bringing perspectives to the table that don't always get heard in spaces like this. So with that, let's dive into our priorities. It's my pleasure to introduce Representative Su Hong, the Secretary of Georgia's Legislative AAPI Caucus. Representative Hong will be talking about AAPI voter engagement and outreach. So. Thank you, good morning. Um, I am excited to be standing here as a member and an officer of Georgia's very first AAPI caucus. Our caucus is going to focus on issues that are affecting Asian American communities here in Georgia. And as many of you know, we have a tremendous growth in our Asian American communities and we want to make sure that we have representatives that will be addressing those issues. Um, one of those issues that we will be focusing on is voter engagement and outreach. I know many of our caucus members um, during our campaigns uh, worked a lot to reach out to Asian American communities and um, educate and involve them in the voting process. And so we will continue to do so as a caucus, uh, continue to educate, continue to make sure that they understand and know the process of registering to vote and the voting process so that we can continue to see the increase in Asian Americans voting here in our future elections. Um, I am looking forward to working with my colleagues here on both sides of the aisle on these issues uh, affecting our Asian American communities. Uh, with that, um, I am going to introduce you to our treasurer, Representative Long Tran. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, it's an exciting time to have this AAPI caucus. One of the things we're going to be focused on is helping um, DACA students. And you know what we'd like to see is anyone who graduates from a Georgia high school be eligible for in-state tuition. You know, we know that student enrollment at our universities are going to continue to continue to decline over the next 10 years. Our labor issues are going to continue to increase. Prior to the pandemic, for every unemployed Georgian, we had three jobs available. Today, post-pandemic, we're looking at five jobs for every unemployed Georgian. So it's good for our economy to start giving people a path into the workforce for the higher paying jobs to have good careers, not just simply jobs. And um, you know, as we continue to grow and expand our industries, whether it's in the electric vehicle market or in Hollywood, trained, skilled students, college grads become vital to, to our 
state and our country. And um, you know, as a son of refugee parents, they came over here um, hoping to build a better life for their children, for their children to achieve unimaginable dreams. And we're starting to stray away from that path where we've got immigrant parents, um, undocumented and legally legal parents who come over here and may overstay their H-1B visas, um, but they still have the same dream, and that is for their kids to achieve the endless possibilities, whatever they desire. So this is a legislation that is um, something hopefully the caucus can achieve this session. And uh, I'd like to introduce our vice chair, Farouk Magal from District 105. Thank you, Representative Tran. Uh, super excited to be here. Um, you know, I want to thank our, our, our caucus, uh, the newly elected uh, representatives, freshmen, and also our chairwoman. Thank you for your leadership. And uh, so proud to have also our minority whip, uh, Representative Sam Park, among us, um, Senator uh, Nabil Islam and State Representative Pedro Moran. Thank you for, uh, for as we are growing in our caucus, you know, where um, our focus is also to make sure that we have a great minority representation in small businesses. Uh, that has been a great focus. As you know, that majority of the AAPI community that we have in, in all across Georgia has, um, you know, a, a small business. So we'll be focusing on how we can help those minority businesses with, with contracting and job creations. As uh, Representative Tran talked about, uh, Hyundai and Kia plants coming in, so we have to make sure that we get more businesses engaged. Uh, so B2B is going to be very important um, in representing you know, our economy with you know, how it's being so diverse uh, in our state, uh, in Gwinnett County and other places. So looking forward to working and, and representing you know, all over the state. And I'll just give back, yield back to um, uh, our uh, Sam Park Minority Whip, uh, Representative Park. Uh, do you want me to introduce Pedro? Uh, so, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's been a great honor and privilege uh, to be a part of this caucus, to see such growth, not just in terms of Asian American political participation, but here in terms of our representation as well. Um, one of the key aspects of the work that we'll be doing uh, as Asian American legislators, but also as children and grandchildren of immigrants, is to build cross-coalitional relationships um, to advocate for issues that affect all of our communities. And so with that, it is a great honor and privilege to introduce my good friend, uh, one of the first Latino uh, Hispanic um, elected officials here in the state of Georgia, Representative Pedro Marin. Thank you. So, good morning. Buenos dias. So I want to uh, first congratulate my colleagues in the House and in the Senate for establishing the Asian American Pacific Islanders Legislative Caucus. This is a historic moment in Georgia history that should not be overlooked, but more so celebrate as a major political milestone in our state. As we prepare for a new era, and create history, let's be sure the needs and concerns of our respective communities are taken seriously and dressed accordingly. For too long, there have no voice, there have been no voices at the state capitol who would speak with authority for communities about their struggles, their dreams, and their support in, for this state and this country. But time, but, Time is changing, and I believe for the better. As many as you know, this is my 21st year serving in the Georgia House of Representatives, and I'm so glad to be here today to usher in a new chapter in Georgia history. In 2023, the People's House will finally start to reflect the diversity of our state. Just look at the people standing here today, 10 years ago, of the, Many of them would not be here, maybe not even conceding uh, public service. Yet, the slow gains we made has allowed our Georgians to envision themselves as possibly becoming legislatures, constitutional officers, and maybe even governor. 
This caucus is only the beginning. In time, we will have another, uh, each, another such group comprising of dedicated men and women who proudly represent another growing constituency. I look forward to standing here again to announce the establishment of the Georgia Hispanic Legislative Caucus. I am working with my colleagues to ensure we develop something reflective of collective vision and capable of making a difference. I have waited two decades. I can wait a couple months more. We will have a collective responsibility to build a coalition based on shared experiences, vision, values, and commitment to protecting the best this great country offers us. There are many things that unite us. That our similarities are great, but we're also stronger because of our differences. Thank you for being leaders. Thank you for being legislatures. Thank you for representing your communities with a, with a passion and commitment they deserve. Thanks again for the opportunity to speak to you all. Thank you. Thanks, Pedro. So I just want to underline one thing that we've just noted. As I noted earlier, the importance and the goal of any caucus, but especially one representing minority groups, is to put our collective weight uh, behind groups and issues not always heard at the state capitol or seen in rooms of power. So one thing the 2020 census made clear is that Georgia is now a majority minority state, right? And what that means is that the voices of minority communities are going to gain increasing prominence as we continue to grow and diversify. But minority groups working in exclusion or apart from each other represents a fracturing of that power. And given that minority communities in Georgia have so many shared goals, as Representative Moran alluded to, the best way to achieve those goals is, in fact, to work together and to build cross-cultural coalitions and empower those groups that we represent. So it is for this reason that one key priority of the Legislative API Caucus is, in fact, to build partnerships and work together closely with other minority groups in our legislature on these issues that we have prioritized and that you've heard about. Um, because in working with um, the Legislative Black Caucus, in working with legislators representing the Hispanic community, uh, across origins, across geography, and across parties, we will all be stronger and work more effectively for those that we represent. So I think with that, I know everyone wants to get to the budget hearings. Um, we are open for some questions and invite any member of the caucus to come up and answer them if they're comfortable. Any questions? What would you say is the very top priority of this caucus for this legislative session? Well, we've identified several priorities in our first meeting, but I would say that one of the top priorities that came up um, basically most readily and most easily because it is a bipartisan issue that we all care about and both parties care about is increasing this growth of AAPI voter engagement and turnout as well as encouraging other AAPI people to rise up to um, public service. AAPI voter turnout increased by 84% in 2020 and I think at that time that was a story. It, it did become, I feel like, in some of the national press, a little bit of a novelty story, like, check this out, look at all these Asian people that live in Georgia, like, almost like that was the story, that Asian people exist here. We want to show that this was not an aberration, this is not a flash in the pan, this is the first in a data point of increasing growth in the fastest growing population in the nation. Any specific legislation you're working on, whether it's voter engagement, whether it's college tuitions, or any other topics, that legislation that we can see in one of the two options? We have not, as a caucus, sponsored a specific piece of legislation yet, but we did talk about several issues that you heard about. Representative Tran alluded to some, and um, some issues that we would be happy to discuss and throw away behind as a caucus, including uh, especially investment in our immigrant communities and making sure that there is equitable access to education, job opportunities, and economic growth. Start a budget week. Anything specific in the budget that the caucus is looking either to push or ask for? Well, I think generally speaking, and I don't want to, people should feel free to jump in instead of me just talking the whole time. But one of the things that we did talk about and I have talked with a lot of community leaders about is actually a holdover from last session with the passage of HB 1013. That was a framework, it was a start to increase our mental health infrastructure in this state. One thing that I've heard a lot from Asian communities that I work with and around the state is that there is an issue with um, mental health availability and outreach 
particularly for Asian patients who tend to underreport, tend to underseek um, care in this arena for a number of reasons, including some cultural reasons. And investment in culturally competent outreach and making sure that we have providers that um, are from these communities who can speak the different languages that people need to access healthcare is going to be uh, a focus, I think, for, for many folks in our communities that we represent. Oh, one last thing. When I spoke about building coalitions, we have one final speaker who is my good friend, Senator Nikki Merritt, who is uh, the vice chair of the Legislative Black Caucus. Nikki, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I, um, it is a pleasure to be here, and I want to thank the AAPI Caucus for inviting me today to come and speak and give greetings from the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. And um, this is a groundbreaking moment, and uh, it is planting seeds to broaden the voices and the advocacy here in our Georgia General Assembly. I am honored to represent one of the most diverse counties in Georgia, which includes a large and diverse AAPI community. The Georgia Legislative Black Caucus looks forward to engaging in cross-cultural dialogues and creative problem solving to highlight the issues that are challenging, that are uniquely challenging to our minority communities across our state and in Gwinnett County. The challenges that both of our communities have faced to get to this point actually seeing our government begin to reflect the cultural and racial makeup of the citizens that we represent has been no short road. The men and women you see before you are trailblazers. Um, they're building a foundation and they are filling that, building that foundation to shelter and to serve those in their communities for themselves and the many more that will come after them. We are excited and honored to share this new beginning and look forward and look forward to broadening our network and do the work that is much needed in uh, our minority representation in our state and across our counties and all of the districts that they represent as well. So I want to thank you all and have a good day. So I, I don't see Rahul, but um, I was going to add just a few things in terms of um, certainly things that I'll be looking for when it comes to the budget, uh, but I think issues that are important to all immigrant communities, certainly the Asian American and the Hispanic uh, community. Three things come to mind. Uh, first, uh, the, governor, uh, the governor's proposal um, will have a $2,000 teacher pay raise, which, uh, some, which will be something that's, that we'll be watching very, very closely. Um, second, uh, the property tax exemption. Um, will also be something that will certainly impact all of our communities, but one that we'll be following closely. And lastly, uh, I heard the governor mention during the Martin Luther King Jr. Um, event here at the Capitol last week that the Department of Administrative uh, Services had finished their report regarding minority contracting and some of their proposals to ensure that all of our communities um, are able to benefit um, and ensure that we can continue to thrive. And so we'll be continuing to follow that issue uh, and ensure that Asian American small businesses in particular have an opportunity uh, to competitively bid uh, for those services, for those service contracts moving forward. Uh, with that, I'm happy to turn it back over to Madam Chair Al for any other questions. We had discussed some of those potential events at our first caucus meeting. I don't want to get too far ahead of our skis because we do need to um, solidify some of those um, plans, but we have discussed the fact that this second um, commemoration of the March 16th shootings is coming up and we want to keep our focus on two things. The first is this continuing wave of rising AAPI, anti-AAPI hate and discrimination, that this continues to be an issue and to keep it at the forefront in the work that we do to combat these types of discrimination and also negative depictions and stereotypes in the media. The second thing I'd like to focus on is continuing support for our communities who continue to be impacted by the events of March 16th. 
one of the things that we had discussed is organizing um, a viewing around a PBS documentary that came out just this past fall. It kind of got rolled into the election season, but there was a documentary about many of the community organizers and the families who were impacted um, by the events of March 16th and having the filmmakers come down for a panel discussion and rolling that in with maybe some sort of a fundraiser for some of the community organizations that have been doing work around this issue. Thank you for that question. Any other questions? Yes. I'm going to let Long. This is a good one for you, Long. Um, so obviously, we're going to collaborate on legislation. Uh, as Pedro and Nikki over there, you know, you can see that we're supportive of one another. So. Um, on the legislative side, that's going to be vital as we move forward with um, various bills. Um, you know, as we, the question about the budget earlier, you know, I'd like to see a budget for technical colleges because that affects all of the communities, whether it's Hispanic, Asian American, or the African American community. Um, and then in addition to that, outside of the legislature, we're going to hopefully be partnering on more community events together working within each other's communities so that there's a better understanding so that when we write these laws, it's reflective of counties like Gwinnett, which is one of the most diverse counties, not just in Georgia, but within the nation. And we're not talking about a diversity of five or six cultures. We're talking about dozens of cultures, dozens of languages in Gwinnett. And so that presents a challenge, but one where, as we see the formation of the Hispanic Caucus, the AAPI Caucus, working with the Black Legislative Caucus, we're going to be ready to tackle the, the rising challenges um, as our communities become more diverse. Thank you so much, everyone, for showing up on this uh, challenging weather day. Obviously, you can reach out to any of us at any time with any further questions, and we will continue to keep everyone informed of our activities as we move forward um, this session and um, for the rest of the year. Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.